in my last video i talked about rate limiter and mainly focused on fixed window rate limiter in today's video i am going to talk about concurrency rate limiter concurrency limiter limits the number of concurrent requests that's what it is all about so if we have to declare the concurrency rate limiter it is very similar to how we declare the fixed window rate limiter but before we do that let me run this application and show the fresh start which is there is no rate limiter at this point in time and now if i go and try it out you can see there is no rate limiter so it works like a normal application now if i go back here what i can do is at this point in time i can create the rate limiter here so for the rate limiter what i can do is i can do builder dot services and after that i can do add rate limiter and then rate limiter comes with options and for the options we can start with options dot global rate limiter just as we did before and this rate limiter is applied across all requests so we can do that and then we can use just like the other one we can use partition rate limiter dot create and for the create we can use http context because we are going to limit based on http context and the key the partition key is going to be a string just like last time and i'm going to share the link to the last video where i discussed about fixed window rate limiter so at this point in time what we can do is we can do context and for context what we can do is we can say rate limit partition dot get and this time we are going to use get concurrency limiter and for the concurrency limiter we can have partition key and for the partition key i'm going to keep the same partition key which is the host from the header so we can do context dot request i have to change this to http context instead of http content so context dot request dot headers dot host dot to string so that's the partition key and for the lambda function which is the factory we can use partition and we can define the lambda and for that we are going to provide new concurrency limiter option that's the object we are going to set and here all we have to do is we just have to set the par limit option which is the maximum number of concurrent requests that are permitted now just like the previous one q limit is the number of queued requests that is allowed and queue processing order is in which order the queue will be processed now we don't need both of these right now so we're just going to set par limit and for par limit i'm going to set it as one it's basically allowing only one request or one concurrent request so that it's easier to see and the other thing we are going to do is for the options we can set the rejection status code and for that we can use status codes dot port 29 too many requests and after we set this out all we have to do is we have to do app use rate limiter and this is where we are adding the rate limiter into the http pipeline through the rate limiter middleware so now if i go ahead and run this application at this point in time also we will not be able to see the response properly meaning we are not going to get a 429 http code back and the reason for that 
is that we cannot from the UI create concurrent requests. So even if we execute, doesn't matter how fast, we're just getting back the response. For that, what we are going to do is we're going to create a client. And for the client, it's just a simple console application. So for this application, we are going to start with a while loop. The reason for while loop is that we want it to run continuously, or we could have done a console dot read line also, but let's just do while true so that we can just kill the application. Once we shown that concurrent request has returned 429. Now, one thing I want to mention that we normally don't use while of true. That's a bad coding practice, but I'm doing it just for the demonstration of this example. Now here, what I can do is I can do a parallel run because I want to make concurrent request and I can do parallel dot for and I can start with zero, run it five times. And then I can say count. And this is where my Lambda function is going to be. Now inside the parallel for all I want to do is I want to make HTTP request to the weather forecast service that I created. So I can do using var client is equal to new HTTP client. And then I can do var and let's do using here also var response is equal to await and as soon as i return await you can see that the visual studio has automatically added async here because it understands if i need await if i'm calling a function with await it needs to have an async so it added the async to the lambda automatically but if it is not done then you have to manually add async here now after that i'm going to say a client dot get async and for the async, I need the URL from the web API. So from here, I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to paste it here. And after that, I'm going to do a console.write line and I'm going to write the status code from the response. So I'll do response.status code. So now at this point in time, if I run this application, I should see 200 as well as 529. So let's go ahead and run the application. And we can see that there are a lot of 200 and a lot of too many requests as well. As you can see, there's a okay, okay, and then there's a lot of okay, and then too many requests, then another okay, and so on and so forth. So because we are running in a while loop and we are doing a parallel dot for, we are able to reproduce the concurrency limiter that we added. So here in the concurrency rate limiter is working as expected. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to this channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.